So I'm going out to a party in the evening. Grandma will not be in bed by 11.30. Can you believe that? I can. I can't even tell you when the last time was that I went out to a party in the evening. Like actually getting ready late in the afternoon to go somewhere out in the evening to party. I've been to dinners, but not a party. So I thought why not just record a little chat to get ready with me and uh, show you the makeup that I'm going to wear. Not that it's going to necessarily be like the evening version of the makeup that I usually do. Because let's be honest, the look that I'm going to do is probably something I would wear on the daily as well. But it is a little bit smokier. I'm obviously going to spruce it up with a little bit of sparkles. So let me take you along on this journey. And just to illustrate how long it's been since I've gone out to a party. Uh, first of all, I'm not wearing anything even remotely party-like. Because I still can't really wear heels. And I can maybe go back to that in a little bit if I don't forget. And I am the type that prefers to wear like like dresses and skirts and stuff like that more with heels than I do with sneakers and like lately I've basically been wearing either sneakers or like flat uh, boots or stuff like that um, but like I said I'll go back to that in a second but because I'm going to a party and you know the party will basically be up here I thought hmm do I still have something like to put in my hair from my party days when I would like also spruce up my hair a little bit so I was digging through my drawers to try and find something and I did find a couple of really cute things actually a couple of things that I wore for my wedding so I just wanted to show you so I have these little cute thingies here like little flowers that you kind of just like screw in to your hair but anyway they're really cute and i just wanted to show them to you uh, before we get on the makeup though i wanted to show you something else i received this apollo's uh, choice hyaluronic acid and peptide booster and when i say i received i don't want to imply that i received it as pr or, or as a gift unfortunately i'm not on the pr list of Polo's choice even though i'm like a marketing person for them um, no they were having a sale and every now and then they will have these like vip presents and as someone who purchases from their brand regularly several times a year, I, I would say I classify as a VIP. Sometimes they will give you like really generously. First of all, the, you always get several uh, travel sizes, which are really good uh, travel sizes. And sometimes they will even give you like full sizes of products. Now, the last time, I'm going to start doing my makeup and stop rambling. Now, the last time they gave me a travel size was actually... Uh, a product that I fell in love with that turned out to be discontinued so I hope that this is not going to be one of those cases because I actually really like this it's very nourishing and it is perfect to apply like either in the evening or in the morning while you're doing your makeup before you apply lipstick I personally prefer it in the morning because I'm very attached to my uh, Laneige lip sleeping mask for the evenings but what I also wanted to mention it has like uh, this metal dispenser from which the product comes from so you squeeze it out and then you dispense it with this and because this is like metal it has an immediate like cooling effect which is you know like a nice little side bonus and I said I was going to stop rambling and here I am rambling 10 minutes later I'm going to start with my Inglot eyeshadow primer I've got a few things to say about this now uh, I do like the primer a solid good primer however I went to check the price of that primer and boy, has this become way more expensive than I recall buying it for. That said, I did purchase it on discount. So I can't remember how much I paid for it, how much I paid for it after discount. But I want to say that after the discount, I paid something in the range of like 10 to 12 euros for it. And yesterday I went to look on Look Fantastic how much this primer costs. And at least on their website, it was over 18 euros. And considering that it is... Um, smaller size compared to the MAC one all right it's getting a little bit darker because like I said it's like the late afternoon so I turned on my artificial light sources uh, but anyway I was saying I did go and compare a little bit to the MAC primer um, I mean inflation has led to the increase of the price of the MAC primer to a whopping 26 something euros which is insanity so this is still far cheaper than the MAC one um, but it is also smaller in size. This is 10 mils, whereas the MAC primer is 12 mils. But I do really like the texture. I do really like the packaging of this because of the nozzle that I can dispense more like um, predictable amount of products with. Um, and it 
basically uh, doesn't really feel different than my MAC primer. It is not super drying because I've had eyeshadow primers that yes to keep my eyeshadows in place but they're so dry that my skin feels like parchment. It is still significantly cheaper than both the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion which is still in the range of 22-23 euros um, and the MAC primer but it is not as cheap as I recalled. Probably there are other primers out there that are really good. I have not really had a primer from NYX in a really long time. I tried their HD eyeshadow base, but unfortunately that one performed extremely inconsistently for me. And I feel like my uh, under eyes are going to require a little bit of work and illumination here because they're looking a bit shabby and dark for some reason. Actually, I'm not that surprised. After the week that I've had at work, I'm feeling pretty fucking exhausted. So it is not a surprise that my under eyes are in a pretty dire need of some work. I'm taking the Bendy Avocado Concealer, still trying to finish that one up. And yes, I mentioned that I've had like a pretty intense week at work. I had to be on my feet a lot. I have like a very big, very intense like manual labor kind of experiment. So I had to run around the lab a lot this past week. And um, predictably, but a bit unfortunate still, is that I um, I can feel the place where I broke my foot after a day like that. I don't think that's totally unexpected. I was counting yesterday how long it's been since the accident and it hasn't even been half a year. So I think it is totally normal that when I like overuse my foot, it can still hurt a little bit at the spot. And after a good night's rest, the pain disappears. Um, quite quickly so it's not like I think something is wrong it's more that um, it's a clear sign that I am not 100% recovered and I would rather be 100% recovered before I go back on heels for a whole day okay did I do anything here for my under eyes are they looking okay yeah there is unfortunately still a bit of blueness right here right here and under here so I'm going to apply just the tiniest bit more concealer and I'm just going to use my finger to rub it in but that is the reason that I'm not like all you know dolled up for going out because it just a lot of the outfits that I would put on would like in my mind require wearing heels which I can't do right now so then I'd rather wear like trousers with a sweater and sneakers and call it a day and keep the party up here Honestly, in terms of my under eyes, I don't think it's going to get any better, so I'm just going to go on to do my foundation. I'm going to take the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I stopped using this foundation a couple of weeks ago because I thought it's really nice that I can go back to my uh, Pat McGrath foundation. And also because I noticed that it was starting to cling to dry patches on my skin. Maybe at the time my skin was not at its best and it was a bit dry. Um, and I wasn't really feeling it, so I kind of decided to give it a break. But I think for a night out, it might be nice to try it again and see how it performs. Because I do actually like this foundation. I do love the shade match on me and the finish is exactly what I want. Like something a little bit more on the natural side. Light to medium coverage foundation, just the way I like it. So let's see how it's going to perform today. Granted, I did do a treatment with a hyaluronic acid right before this. I did do my Foreo Bare treatment with the hyaluronic uh, acid serum that I have from Foreo, the Serum Serum Serum. So my skin should be pretty plumped up and hydrated right now. But I think the foundation is actually looking pretty nice. I'm going to set the foundation with my Gucci powder because I recall these two working well together. I don't know whether that happens to you, but like sometimes certain foundations will work really well with one powder and not at all with another powder. I have this specifically with my Pat McGrath foundation and ironically the Pat McGrath foundation does not work for me with the loose setting powder that the foundation comes with. I'm talking about this powder just if anyone was wondering. It's a really nice powder. It's not one that you see featured on my channel a lot because I just can't be bothered with loose powders. Whoops. But also, ironically, that powder just does not work with the Pat McGrath foundation for me. It just... I feel like they're both heavy on silicones and somehow that results in like a lot of slippage and 
bunching up throughout the day, I cannot really explain it. But the uh, Dior Backstage Powder works really well with the Pat McGrath foundation. I've been really pleased with how these two work. So now I've made it a point to just use that foundation only with that powder. But that's why I'm mentioning that it's important sometimes to recall which foundation worked with which powder. I'm going for a more cool toned eye, so I'm going to grab the Diffused Bronze Light um, Highlighter, not Highlighter, Bronzer from Hourglass to like bronze slash contour. So what is a new makeup product that you purchased that you're really excited about? I have, as usual, the beginning of the year is always a very slow like um, start for me. I haven't really purchased that much makeup in the months of January and February. I got the Lunar New Year collection from Pat McGrath in the be very beginning of the year. Still very happy with my choice to buy that because I love the lipstick and I really adore the limited edition packaging of Voristic Vixen. And I just purchased Kitten Mischief and Decade Gloss from Lisa Eldridge, but I haven't really purchased anything else nor do I have my eye on anything else. But I'm wondering what you guys have been loving would you recommend something? Does something stand out so much that you would be like, okay, Mariam, you need to try this? Obviously, I'm going through a phase where I am, I haven't bought that much makeup and I'm in the mood to buy makeup and I know that's a mistake and I shouldn't do it. But that doesn't mean I can't at the very least stay informed. I'm going to take my uh, Gucci blush in the shade Rose Beige. Rosy Beige? Rosy Beige, how could I forget? because we're going for a more, like I said, cool toned look and this is my favorite cool toned blush. I'm going to take my Lunar Nude Highlighter from Pat McGrath Labs because it's basically my perfect, you know, match for this blush and for this more like cool toned cheek and I know you've seen this before but you know, I'm a creature of habit and I really like this combination, so I'd like to do it. And also this kind of highlighter has a bit more like sparkle to it. So it is perfect for like a night eye out. I'm going to, as usual, spritz a little bit of Fix Plus on my Real Techniques sponge in order to melt specifically the uh, cheek products. Okay, let's do eyes. I'm actually going to go into an older favorite that I haven't featured on my channel in a while, which is the NARS Climax palette. And I'm really feeling like doing a beautiful like steel blue smoky eye using this eyeshadow here. So I'm going to start with what I usually do. I mix these two shades to put through my crease. I'll put this one through the uh, outer corner, this one on the lid, and we are going to put a little bit of sparkles over top of that. Not that this shade isn't sparkly, but I feel like for a night out the sparkle needs to be a hundred percent and nothing less. So I'm just going to fluff these here through the crease with a very large uh, blending brush. I still really like this palette. This is my one and only NARS palette, but it is just so perfect that I can't imagine NARS ever outdoing themselves in terms of a color story, in terms of the formula. Going to grab a smaller pencil type of brush and into this deep brown shade here, which has a little bit of a like plummy undertone to it. And because of the plummy undertone, I think it's going to play really well with the lipstick that I want to wear. It is a beautiful shade, it provides so much depth. I really, really like this eyeshadow, it blends out so easily. I don't know, this palette is such a beautiful hidden gem. Sadly, it seems to be a one-off because since then I haven't really seen NARS do anything extraordinary. I've seen them release palettes, a lot of like standard warm brown gold palettes. Nothing wrong with those, they sell well. But this was such a unique, such an out-of-the-box color story. Like whoever they gave the creative control to to make this eyeshadow palette, they should give them creative control more often because this was phenomenal. I'm still completely undecided on the Love Collection from Pat McGrath. Of course, it has already like sort of gone on sale. At this point, you can purchase things 25% off if you purchase under a certain amount and 30% above a certain amount. So I was on the website considering to purchase maybe a bundle of the uh, two eyeshadow palettes that are not the all matte one, not Velvet Liaison, but the other ones, I don't know how they're called. So I kept going on the website and thinking, do I want to try it? Because uh, Martina at the very least claims that these have somewhat like 
improved formulas both in terms of the mattes and the metallics and that um, I expected that they are a step up from her older six pants but at the same time I look at these color stories and I just don't feel inspired by the way I'm going like ham on my outer corners here because I feel like as a night outlook we could definitely go more ham than we would during the day so Although I should probably speed up a little bit. I'm supposed to go out in like 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my NYX glitter glue, if I can open it. There it is. And apply a little bit of that all over my lid before I apply the metallic shade. So yeah, I don't think I will be getting anything from the Love Collection after all. If I'm, If I keep doubting about it so much and I don't really feel inspired or buying something from this collection doesn't spark immediate joy i think it's going to be a waste of money and i'm and I, I will end up not really enjoying these palettes so i think i have now made an almost like firm 100 percent decision that i'm not going to purchase anything from this collection and i'm just going to wait for something better to come along whenever that may be okay i'm going to grab this beautiful very unique steel blue and apply that all over the eyelid and a little bit over top of that dark brown shade and I've said it before and I will say it again these metallics are extremely dense they actually remind me a little bit of the lid luster from Victoria Beckham now that I come to think of it they have that like same density to them that when you apply them with a finger I feel like they're just too much and they can become very textured because of that and um, shadows like this in my experience are much better applied with a brush and these very like counterintuitive like actual swiping motions because that way I think the sparkle comes through a lot a lot better so in case you have never seen me use this eyeshadow palette before this is my absolute winning strategy when using NARS Climax shimmers I apply them with a brush and I do the thing that everyone will tell you not to do with your metallic shades I swipe them across the lid because the more I swipe the more metallic and sparkly this becomes okay I'm going to give it a nice little blend here in my crease as an inner corner highlight I'm just going to apply the uh, champagne shade from the climax palette itself I don't think it's my perfect inner corner, but it will do. And then, of course, I'm going to apply a little bit more glitter. And who is surprised that the glitter is going to be an astro shade from Pat McGrath? No one. You could actually apply a little bit of this shade over top of this shade to give it a bit of light in the center. I think that's how I usually would uh, go about this palette. But like I said, today we're going for some extra sparkle because it's a party after all. So I'm going to go into Astral Solstice here. And apply a little bit of that all over the lid and maybe even through the inner corners too. And I don't want it to completely overtake the look though. So I'm going to like gently swipe it around. Oh, this is going to be so beautifully sparkly when I stand under artificial lighting. On my lower lashes, I'm going to go just for the dark brown shade here because it will be the perfect completion to this look and maybe mix in a little bit of the darker, oh, sorry, not the darker, the lighter mattes towards the inner corner of the eye. Just so it's not like mega dramatic. I'm just going to take this one here to apply onto like the inner portion of the lower lash line and then I'm going to give everything a nice little blend and I think I'm going to apply the tiniest like the absolute tiniest little bit of astral solstice also in my inner corners but let me blend this out first okay going into astral solstice now and just going to stamp a little bit of that here into my inner corners I am like super feeling myself with this eye look so I just wanted to also show you how intense and crazy the sparkles are obviously you know what astral solstice is like so I don't really know why that's necessary but you know for my own pleasure 
we're doing this. Why do I have a hair right in front of my face? That's crazy. I think this look would be absolutely beautiful with something like a fair from Lisa Eldridge, like something a little bit more toned down and nude to really let the eyes uh, be the, the, the spotlight of the look. But I'm not about that life. I really love wearing uh, this specific look with this specific lipstick, which is the shade, the most perfect, one of the most perfect lipsticks ever created. This is Flash 3 from Pat McGrath Labs. The reason I love pairing these together is because, like I mentioned to me, this dark brown shade here in the NARS Climax palette has a little bit of like those same plummy undertones and it just matches so beautifully with Flash 3 that I can never help myself but to use Flash 3 whenever I have used this eyeshadow. I hope that you enjoyed this little impromptu get ready with me. Let me know what you thought about this look. As usual, thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you in my next video.